Hi, I'm Donna Slosky. I'm a mosaic artist. And uh, this is Carol Ann Garafala. And she's going to interview me today about being a mosaic artist for my show at the Artist Guild of Anna Maria Island at 5414 Marina Drive in Holmes Beach, Florida. And uh, she's got some questions prepared. I've been doing mosaics for about 12, 13 years, I uh, learned in, um, from mosaic artists um, in a studio in New York called the Unicorn um, Art Studio. And uh, the Hannisons were the name, they're fantastic uh, mosaic artists. And before that, um, I had a career as a librarian and worked, you know, at real work. And then, <laughs> this is just fun work. And um, and now, and then we opened a, a restaurant and I sold some of my mosaics there and my husband's a chef, so we did that. And then we closed and retired and now I pretty much do mosaics. Um, that's my job, I mean, that's what I do full time. Um, and I love it, it's absolutely wonderful. Mosaics is a great way to use your hands if I'm a very tactile person, so this is a great way to play with stuff and break stuff and put stuff back together. It's like creating a puzzle, except you're creating the pieces. So it's a lot of fun. And um, I use stained glass and I use broken china, both. And I'll be demonstrating just, we're gonna do this a few minutes of this talk and I'll demonstrate a couple of techniques and also talk a little bit about um, how I do a project from beginning to start. Donna, what drew you to mosaics as opposed to working with oils or watercolors? Well, I, you know, it's funny. I never grew up thinking of myself as an artist. I've always been more of a sort of crafty person. Like I used to make clothing and I was always like as a teenager making something as well as playing music. I was a musician too. Um, and I never considered myself like a fine artist. Mm -hmm. I, I never, I mean, I drew some, but it wasn't something I grew up doing. And again, again, it appealed to me because of the tactile nature, number one. It also appealed to me because I like the idea of breaking something and creating something beautiful out of it. I don't know, it just makes, it's sort of a metaphor for, for life in a way, um, how you can pick up the pieces, so to speak, and make something beautiful out of something that's you know, broken or mm -hmm. sad in your life or disappointing. So um, kind of the way I live my life, I try to live that way. And I think that that psychologically appealed to me. Um, also, I really like the little, believe it or not, I really love working with really little tiny itsy bitsy pieces of things, very, very fine details. So again, mosaics enables you to do something like that. Um, for example, I can show you. So this one is, it's not, the, it's not the best example, but this one I did, I actually bought these, but it's, it's from the African American experience, it's something I created um, about all of the um, African Americans who've been um, shot by police. I, I actually have to complete it because it doesn't unfortunately have all the names on it that I want to put on it, but as you can see, I work with random shapes. Um, some mosaic artists use uniform shapes, and I, I don't. I generally use random cuts. Um, and I first draw the piece, draw the image, and then I uh, do a, um, I, I then use pieces to fit with the colors that I'm, so it's sort of like painting with color, painting with glass. Um, and what about the piece, the wood that it's on? What did that come from? So this is a door. I use, I use, ah. I reuse cabinet doors. Um, this thing was a plaque that I actually had in my restaurant that I just reused. I reuse everything. So, and I decided it was too small looking on its own. Mm -hmm. So I put it on this door mm -hmm. and then it also enabled me to put the names around it. You know, I got to say that my approach to art, and sometimes I think like I'm not doing it right in quotes, but my approach to art is very serendipitous almost, mm -hmm. but also there's precision involved. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I'm 
making something like a bird, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. um, what I will do is, obviously there's a lot of detail involved in this, right? So this thing is a rosette spoon bill and I drew this from a photograph and I've taught myself how to draw. Because I've also taken classes because, again, I don't consider myself to be a painter or an artist in that way, but, you know, I want, I'm taking some drawing classes starting up soon, so. This is Rosette Spoonbill, and what I do is, as you can see, all these feathers have to be cut by these hands. I have to find the colors, and then I have to cut them. So, I'm going to put this over here for a minute. Okay, so, as you can see... I have bins of glass. Now, I also have drawers of glass sorted by color. Um, the glass, by the way, is mostly given to me by stained glass artists. I don't really buy many materials. Um, the plates that I use for, like, let's say a tray like this, is the beginning of the tray here. The uh, plates that I use were donated to me, are donated to me from an ex-customer from the restaurant who sells china fine china online so this stuff is like from england from germany i mean it's really high quality stuff and i love working with it because i'm very inspired by the designs i'm also very inspired by the patterns in the glass you know i mean i look at this and i'm like hmm what could i do what is this this looks like water okay so I, i'll cut it so it has a so let me show you the tools here so this is a, uh, this is called a, a cutter. It's very light. This one's very lightweight. This one's another one, but it's a little deeper. So I can go like that and create sort of a random shape. Mm. And that shape is great for like water, you know, so I'll go like that. How are your hands when you're after you've been cutting glass like that? Well, you know, I do okay, but I always get cuts, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it's just expected. I literally have Band-Aids, like, right there. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm always having Band-Aids on my fingers, always. So what you do want to do to avoid that is to cut off the little tips. You see, these extremely sharp corners. Uh -huh. And I, I, I snip them off. With, this is called a nipper. For obvious reasons it nips off corners and you can make rounded shapes and stuff so this would be an example of like a cut for water and you can see how how if you start you know piecing them together mm -hmm. you would start getting a flow of water and that's that's my style um also like you know i've got reds for this oranges for instance for the sky this is something that I, I, I love doing sunsets and um, a lot of my artwork is in the, in the gallery right now so I don't have any examples to show you but my husband will put them in the video. But this is an example of something for instance that would be a perfect mosaic, okay? So I could get inspired by the colors in this and I find the glass that I don't have to be exact, but this is the kind of thing that I love to do. So, you know, you see how, how the random cuts would work perfectly here. If I, mm -hmm. I started using exact cuts, it kind of, it, it, it wouldn't be my style, number one, and number two, that's, that's the way I want it to look. And as an artist, that's what you do. You do it as you see it in your head. So this would be, you know, the yellows and the pinks and the oranges and all that stuff. Can you mention, uh, you mentioned the Hannisons that you studied under. Can you tell us uh, the kind of work that they used to do? Right. So it was really hard to find a mosaic studio to learn from. I, I swear I couldn't find one in Manhattan. You wouldn't believe it. Um, or the timing was wrong. So finally I found them online. And it basically, what, what they do is large-scale installations in major public buildings. For instance, um, they've done um, Penn Station. They have these inserts 
decorations of the old Penn Station. They would do a mosaic of the old Penn Station using stone. Mm. Okay, or what they call smalti, but stone. So this is flat. That's more comes out from the actual, uh, but it's still grouted. But it comes. It's actually three dimensional, and I love working three dimensions. But yeah. So it sounds like you really had at least the foundation from some expert people who are well known. Absolutely, and they they basically I I did that right before we moved to Florida ten years ago, and. Um, they taught, well, it was like 12 years ago that I took the classes, but we knew we were moving. So I wanted to really get, get a, you know, a, a hold on techniques so that when I came down here, I could work on it. Um, and even though we had a restaurant, I did, I did, spend, I had a little studio in the back, back building mm -hmm. where I would work um, because, you know, it's very stressful and it would really be great at, you know, uh, it enabled me to just, escape. <laughs> so I'm going to show you something because we don't have that much time. So I want to show you a few things. Good. Um, so this is the Rosiat Spoonbill, as you can see. Um, again, I drew it from a photograph. I also use bird books a lot, birding books. I use online photographs. Um, I search on Google on, online for photographs of birds in the, in the poses that I want them to be in. Um, I've done several several uh, birds that I've actually photographed myself and was inspired by that. And I'll look at things and I'll see them as mosaics. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. after a while you yes. see something as a painting, yes, you know, yes. you're like, oh, that would, I see what I would do yes. with the colors and watercolors and techniques you'd use. So I could free draw this onto this board. This board is a door. Okay, it's a door. Um, you can see by the back that it's a door. <laughs> Sometimes I use this part, but I'm going to use this part this time because it's an inset and it's got a beautiful like inset here and then uh, I, can, I can paint or refinish this later. Um, usually I would take all of this off, but since we're, we're doing this, I'm going to just take this carbon paper, okay, and um, Getting carbon paper, by the way, is not so easy these days. I know. <laughs> they don't call yes. it carbon paper anymore. <laughs> yeah. They call it something else, and yeah. I had a hard time finding it. Did you ever find that? Yes. Tracing paper, yes. they call Tracing it? I don't know what paper, they yes. call it. Anyway, so I've got this little ball thing. It's like it comes in different sizes. So I don't know how I'm going to be able to see this on this door, but sometimes it just makes an imprint in the door, you know, in the wood. So I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of this. I'm not going to go crazy here, but... I'm going to show you the basic technique. Um, so here I'm doing a wing. Uh, I don't even know if this is going to come out. Let's see. Yeah, so you see this came out pretty good, actually. Um, although the door is dark. Yeah. You can still see that there's a, a line here. Okay. So that would, would create the outline of of my project, like sort of the paint by number kind of thing, but you're going to do it uh, instead of paint by number, you're doing glass by number, right? So I'm going to use glass for this. And, and the only thing I want to do here is just show you how I would like do a couple of feathers. So I'm going to do just a few feathers. I'll complete this later, but I'm just going to draw the basic outline here of the feather feathers and then I'll, I'll I'll sometimes I go back to the photographs to confirm the colors that I want to use um, also there's such gradation in color with glass um, that it makes for a very beautiful dimension here for instance this is a this is a white but it's kind of a pinky white so you might want to like this might be one pink I would use for an, as an example um, I have bins of there that I would go to. I have bins here that I have um, to go to. But okay, here's a great one. So this is pink, roseate spoonbills. At least the the wings are definitely pink. So we're gonna do this. 
I'm just going to show you a couple of these larger feathers. Don, I noticed that you're sitting on a special stool, <laughs> and your table is clearly higher than what a regular table yeah, would be. Yeah, let me tell you how that works, yeah, right? I think people would be interested in that. So, I have I have problems with my sacroiliac, so I don't, I don't like to sit on a chair, because it hurts. So, I brought this stool, I'm trying to see what it's called, I don't remember. But what it does is you sit on it, but you lean on it, so you're not sitting. Mm -hmm. And as you move, it moves. So you're never like, that's what hurts the back when it's static. Mm -hmm. So when you're moving around, it's a little easier. So that's one. And I got this on Amazon. I think I just looked for a stool that, that different types of stools and, uh, or stools for artwork or something. And then this thing we bought online, this, this platform here, Is that raise? Yeah, so this is this black thing here uh -huh. is on top of the table. And it is it's got a hydraulic a second. I can't find the other hand on that. That's okay, but the notion is that it can the raise. The notion is that I can bring it up and down. You can bring it up and down so that it's more yeah, See, I can oh, lower I it and make it higher. Mostly I like to make it higher uh -huh. because sometimes I don't, it does hurt to sit even uh -huh. on this. So I will stand and I will raise it higher like to this level so that I don't have to like be like that. The key is I don't want to be like that working and I don't want to sit flat on my sacroiliac. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you see this is open here. Right. All right. So let me take this off. I'll finish that later. So there are two types of mosaics I do. As I said, I work with broken china and I work with glass and sometimes I work in combination. But right here I've got several feathers, right? And a little mm -hmm. outline of mm -hmm. the bird, okay? So what I'm gonna do is show you. So what I did basically is if you look at the picture, as you can see what I trace is this and the yeah. top and all of that, but without the feathers, okay? So I'm gonna take this very pretty piece of pink, all right, that I got from my, my scrap bin, which is what I basically use as scraps. I don't, I have some full pieces, but I haven't even purchased them. The same glass, mm -hmm. people give them to me. This is an example, by the way, of something I would do with plates. This is a random cuts, it's a coaster, but I also do very precise pieces with dishes as well, china as well. Um, this might be an example of like a tray that I'm working on. All right, so, so I'm gonna take my cutter. Um, this one has a deeper area than this other one. You see how these are different. This one is not as deep. If you line up the wheels, you see, mm -hmm. makes a big difference. This is a better, higher quality cutter. This is a cheaper one, but it's deeper, so it's better for cutting longer cuts, okay? So let's say I've got a feather like that, okay. So you see, I don't measure anything. These things get loose, so I have to tighten it, but I'm not gonna do it right now. So this is a cut. I'm gonna keep cutting. All right, so we've got, let's say, two feathers here, okay? So I'm going to put them down here, and I'm going to look at, okay, what do I have to do to this piece to make it fit? So what I do is first I want to cut it. I want to cut this off because I want it to be flat, right? Because you can see the line here is flat, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take uh, my nipper, and I'm going to nip until it's the shape I want. And in this case, I want it to be, it's a, it's, it's a feather, so you want it to be a bit of a curve, right? So see, I just nip that. <clears throat> so that's starting to fit very nicely. And again, I don't, I don't necessarily have to stick exactly to the drawing. Mm -hmm. I just sort of make sure it's getting the 
feeling of the bird and the feather. But um, by the time I'm done, it, it will be, it will look exactly like a rosette spoonbill. So I'm cutting off the tip here and I'm going to round this off and see how round it is. It's okay. So I need about that much off and I'm going to snip this until it's kind of rounded out like that. All right. Now again, these are tiny, tiny cuts, but I've done this a long time. If you do this a long time, you get used to it. It's not something that is so easy at the beginning because little tiny cuts, people sometimes have problems with that, but that's okay. It takes time. So this is a good shape now. So what I would do, one of the things that I, that I sometimes choose to do is, um, is I will choose to use a, can't find it somewhere you know I make things very nice and neat and then I can't find what I'm looking for so what I was going to say is so what I do sometimes is, yeah like that? that's fine okay oh no there it is thank you okay here we go I put things in logical places and then I forget where I put them <laughs> right so this is a like sanding uh stone and I'll just you know sometimes I'll do this sometimes I won't bother but it's nice to have the edges nice and uh, smooth right so then I'm going to take this and I have this is the glue I use for this kind of thing it's called weld bond <clears throat> looks like that and um, the hardest thing about working with glues if you work with glues you'll understand this is getting it open again once you open it so this one uh, is usually not too bad let's see Sometimes I have to stick something in the tip to get it to come out properly, but, oh, here we go. That's not too bad. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit here. I use, again, lids for that. Um, I have somewhere, oh, this is a painter's palette. <clears throat> Comes in handy for applying glue. So in, in mosaic speak, they call this buttering. So you butter it and then you apply your piece, right? I try, to keep, I try as much as possible to keep within the lines of my um, drawing. Um, that's the thing about mosaics. It doesn't have to be precise in terms of shape, but it does have to be precise in terms of the lines of the drawing. If you start going outside the lines, not going to really look the way you want. You're going to lose your proportion in terms of the reality. Yeah, you have to really mm -hmm. stick to it. It's like drawing in that mm -hmm. way, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. So here's, I'll do one more feather, and then we can sort of, okay, so this one is much smaller, so I'm not going to use this piece. I'm going to use this piece and make a smaller feather. Um, actually, yeah, let me do one and put it down here, because I know these are smaller feathers down here, so you see how small I work, right? But I like it. Some people would drive absolutely nuts, but it doesn't drive me nuts. I love it. Okay, so if I look at the original drawing, you can see that there's sort of a different size here of a feather. So what I'll do is... Um, yeah, let me just do this. So I want to show you how to shape this. So again, I'm going to cut this off. Oops. All right. So now you see I've got a nice top to the feather. It's kind of curved, right? So I, I'm using this, this tool now instead of the nipper. But you see how it has to be like teeny, teeny, itsy bitsy, like I can't even tell you the size of the cut, but let's see, I just removed a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to sharpen it. You mentioned uh, when we were talking earlier about sometimes you work with, with uh, so that the, the, frag, the remainder of the cuts go into a plastic bin because you have cats who come into your <laughs> studio and they, they want to join you while you're working. Right, so in my garage when I used to work in my other house, um, I'm actually going to apply this feather over here in the smaller section, you see? Mm -hmm. So there. Um, yeah, so the thing about mosaics is you need to be in a place that's not gone, where 
where people and cats are animals not going to walk barefoot, obviously. So, um, I, you, you know, for, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not doing this, but I would normally make the cuts in a bin. So I would do that. Now, the problem with glass is that no matter what you do, it kind of goes all over the place. So this doesn't really work well for glass. So when I'm done, I have to, you know, either use a vacuum cleaner or thoroughly sweep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recently got a pad for the floor because I found my floor was getting scratched. Ah. So this pad is like an office pad mm -hmm. off for under chairs. Mm -hmm. So I got one of those, but yeah. And then my cats can come in this room and he sits in the corner there and we're all very happy. <laughs> they don't walk on the table that much. Thank God. Um, so the other thing I want to show you is, so that's a technique that I wanted to show you. And of course, when it gets to things like the beak, it gets pretty precise. You know, I have to cut this piece. It's a mosaic, so it'll be in several pieces. So like this will be one piece. Then I'll cut a piece here mm -hmm. and I'll cut a piece for the head. And I mean, it gets pretty precise. I'm not going to do it now because I have to spend a lot of time on it. But this little piece up here, that will be a triangle and then I'll round it mm -hmm. off. So I work a lot with shapes, squares, rectangles. Same thing you would do with drawing. It's the same thing with painting and drawing. You know, you, you, you think in terms of, oh, that's a triangle and you draw it as a triangle and then you shape it into what you want it to be, right? Speaking of time, now you just started this mm -hmm. and how long would it take you to do that completed spoonbill on that piece of wood? People always ask me that question and I don't time myself, um, but I would say this will take me, I usually work about two hours at a time at the most. And remember, I'm getting up for breaks because of my back. Mm -hmm. So if I work for two hours a day at it, number of hours would probably be eight. Eight hours, okay. I mean, it's not, I've gotten pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. So like I can finish this entire bird probably in two hours. Okay. Actually, the background takes longer. Why is that? Um, because I have to take all these random little pieces and like fit them together uh -huh. like a puzzle uh -huh. and they have to be like every little spot, every little crack in between the glass has to be filled in. You have to keep your grout lines consistent. You see like this, my grout lines are pretty consistent mm -hmm. here, right? You don't want to have grout lines, some of them are big, some of them are small. I mean, it's not an exact science, but usually what I do, what you want to do is you don't want to have a piece of glass like this. I'll show you this an example real quick. So here's some blue glass, right? So let's say I'm that's a bad example because that one that one won't show well in the, in the dark. All right, let's do instead pick a lighter color so you can see it here. Okay. So here's a nice lighter blue, you can see better, right? So let's say I'm doing the water. So I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna cut just a few pieces, right? This is what I do, I go through these and just cut them. And I, what I do is I keep, I keep sort of tapered pieces. They sort of taper. Mm -hmm. um, and then like I'll cut off the sharp corners. And let me show you how, why it takes time because like, I'll put this here, right? Let's see, I'll put this here. And I've got to find pieces that work mm -hmm. with this. So, it's, like, it's like a puzzle. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's exactly like a puzzle. And like here, oh, that one yeah, fits like wow. that. But they don't always fit. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> you know, since they're random, you kind of like this one. Oh, this is a corner piece, you mm -hmm. see, because mm -hmm. it's flat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this for a corner. Um, and then I might want to introduce other colors, right? Mm -hmm. So... Like maybe some green, would you introduce green? Or green, lighter? here's uh -huh. a lighter blue, uh -huh. just give you an example. Uh -huh. So usually rosette spoonbills are hanging out in like swampy waters. So you're not going to see them, at, or a bay, you're not going to see them hanging out in the ocean. So I'm not going to do the Gulf of Mexico, but 
Mm -hmm. I might do a bay, might have mm -hmm. a little greens, and I also like to do reflections sometimes mm -hmm. in the water. But as you can see, see this is flat. This has a nice curve, which happens to go nicely here. Ah. Doesn't always happen that nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there you go. So see those those cuts. I don't describe these. I love these cuts because they enable me to make it look like wavy, right? So really, it's it's your eye as an artist working with pieces that fit together as a puzzle. Yeah, but then I see them and I'm like, okay, this one, maybe it's the sky. Uh -huh. Now, I'm, I'm not going to do blue here and blue here. So mm -hmm. usually I'll do some clouds mm -hmm. to break up the blue. Um, I'll, use, I'll always draw on a horizon, mm -hmm. right? Um, depends on the piece, but for this, there will be a horizon and I'll have sky and they'll land this 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 particular bird is landing in the water so i hate doing bird feed why because you have to make like tiny yeah. itsy bitsy little like <laughs> toothpicks i don't like doing so i i always have the feet in the water uh-huh the, the bill is hard enough and believe me if you've ever done a heron you have to make like a needle point at the end yeah, oh yeah. my god it has taken me an hour just to cut I will use sometimes this tool, which is actually a glass cutter. You can see it's got a blade on it, and you, you basically push this way, ah. and it, it cuts the glass, you know, but that's if you want a precise cut, okay? I don't always work with precise cuts, but sometimes when you're cutting larger pieces, and the other thing that I do for the background that's nice, especially for the sky, is I find that if I put bigger pieces here, it distinguishes it from the pattern of the subject, of the bird. So these are going to be smaller pieces. Okay. But the background will be bigger, and also in the, in the water, I want it to recede. Mm -hmm. So I'd be smaller pieces in the back, larger pieces in the front, and the colors may change because they change in the water as you're looking from to a distance maybe they'll get darker sometimes they'll get lighter so the challenge is the perspective yeah and where is the sun you know mm -hmm. like with the drawing yes. where's the yes. shadow where's yes. the sun so let's say my sun's over here <clears throat> well it's going to come in this way so it'll be a little lighter here mm -hmm. maybe it'll be a little darker here i'll play with it mm -hmm. but i'll probably make a mixture of dark and light because that's the way the light is usually it's usually sparkles of Sometimes I even use mirror for ah, sparkles in the water because ah. that you really do see sparkles uh -huh, when you're yes, looking in the water, yes. especially if you're moving. It doesn't even have to be moving. I just, you know, so I do that. I also use, um, I'm going to show you this one piece before we end this interview. Um, this is kind of heavy. So this, this was inspired by my friend Janet Kingen. She's a sculptor, ah. and she gave me her broken pieces. She called me one day and said, do you want my broken pieces before I throw them away? So I took the broken pieces, and I made this composition. And this is just an abstract composition, okay? Um, I like using natural materials mm -hmm. like driftwood and stuff, mm -hmm. and actually people tend to like the, nat the natural. So this is one example of, of something I would do. So I do all kinds of styles. I'm not stuck with like Now I, I know that you do commissions. Yeah. So how do people decide <clears throat> what they want you to do? If they say to you, Donna, we, we have this wall or we have this corner of our living room and we would like something in these colors. What would you do? How would you co conceptualize a commission? Well, piece? I ask them first to take a photograph of the space and to measure it. <clears throat> give you an idea of what type of subject they're looking for mm -hmm. and the colors of the room and uh, you know we measure and what I would do is since it's large scale is what you do is um, you lay out your design on paper first okay right and then you use um, this trying to see if I have any nearby it's a, it's a it's an it's um it's a mesh Okay. And the mesh has adhesive on it. So you have three layers. You have your paper, 
you have your you have a like saran wrap type of plastic on top so let's say for instance this is my plastic right so i put this on top and then on top of this i put my mesh the tools and stuff because you can't find them in the stores um so the mesh would go on top of the plastic and then what i do is i water down <clears throat> i water down some glue it could be endless glue you know it could be any sort of pvc glue right you take the glue and you water it down and then I take a brush and instead of affixing it to the wall, I don't do that. I affix it to the mesh. Ah. So when I'm done, since it's a watered down glue, it's sticky, but it's not glued down. So I can remove the plastic. Now I need the paper here because it's got my image on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The plastic, obviously, I can see through that. And then the mesh, I have to see through the mesh to the image. So if it was this kind of, you know, image, I would have um, a piece of plastic on top of it, right? The mesh on top of that. And then I would start, I don't have to draw anything because I've already got my image here. But if I did have to draw, I would just have pencil lines. I don't, I generally don't determine my colors before I start. Some people do that with the mosaics. I don't. I pretty much wing it. I look at my glass and I'm like, well, that's what looks really nice here. And that's what I mean by Well, you have a good eye. I have a good eye for yeah. color. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really enjoy, I don't know, just color. I just am very stimulated by color, as you can see by my house, actually. Um, but so the mesh would be there and then I would peel off I would take the mesh off of the plastic and it would adhere to the mesh. Even though it has glue on it, I still double check, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, I'll show you an example of what I would do. I would take some, uh, some uh, packing tape, like this, and then you take the tape and you use it like um, to adhere it one more time okay so in other words i've got tape on top of my i can't open this but you got tape on top of your design so mm -hmm. i taped the whole thing mm -hmm. you can picture that mm -hmm. so you can still see through it and see this design and it's already glued to the mesh if you don't tape it on top pieces may fall off when you apply it to the wall mm. so then i pick the whole thing up on the mesh Right? Mm -hmm. It's glued to the mesh. It's got the tape on top. And then I apply the I apply the, the adhesive, which usually would be something like this. This is a uh, it's called mastic. It's a tile adhesive. You find it in any hardware store. It's very thick. It's like uh, peanut butter. And I I only use this, I usually use this for ceramics. Uh, not so much for glass. I, I I wouldn't use it for glass. You can see through. It doesn't dry clear, you know. But it dries like cement, so that's why you would use it for a wall. And then I, you know, I press everything in, and I wait a day, and it dries. Take the tape off, mm -hmm. and then pieces are gonna come off with the tape. They always do. So you have to glue them back on. Then you have to wait a little while, and then I would grout it. Okay, and and so. Can and also the other wait, the other thing that yeah. I do is. And this, this is really nice, I like this, is I, people contact me from my Etsy shop, which if you want to look it up, it's Soulful Mosaics, S-O-U-L-F-U-L Mosaics. And I take their family china. Ah. And I make artwork out of it. For instance, if you give me that, box. This is, a, this is a project I'm going to be working on for a friend. Yeah, so she, this, this is was like in her family. Her, this, this, okay, so this broke and she has these pieces and plus she had, she gave me some plates that are broken. So what I'm going to do is she wants me to do is, this is actually going to be for ashes for her, for her deceased animal. 
So I'm going to cover the whole thing with this china and put it, heart, the name of the animal here, Hannah. Okay? Mm. And this will be the box that she'll use. So it's meaningful to her because this, this is from her family and also it's meaningful for her because it'll have the name of the animal on top of it. Um, and this is just a repurposed box that we get at thrift shops. Costs nothing, almost. Um, and um, that's, a, that's a project I love to do. I also do picture, have done picture frames. Like if a family wants like six items from their grandmother and all the first cousins. I have lots of picture frames, like five by seven, that I have wide frames that I can mm -hmm. do some really nice things with. So um, I would say that's a more popular project that I get called on to do than actual commissions for wall things. Mm -hmm. But I did the backsplash in my kitchen in the mm -hmm. other house. Yeah, a sunset. It's absolutely beautiful. It came out really nice. I'll have Jim put that into the video. Good, good. <clears throat> so that's it. That's me. And I enjoy doing this. And I hope one day when COVID is, is behind us, hopefully, um, that you will become interested and want to take one of my classes because I, I do teach and uh, I have a space here where I teach and I also, in St. Petersburg, and I also teach through uh, the Artist Guild of Anna Maria Island. We, we usually use a, a space like a church or something or the, you know, the studio, it's the uh, gallery itself. So, but now I, I, I can't do this with Zoom. It's, I have to provide the tools and the glass and I've done it. I've done it live at, I've taught at the artist, um, uh, Manatee Art, uh, Art Center. Art, Art Center, Center Manatee. Manatee yes. mm -hmm. I've done classes with little kids there. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what they do. Amazing. I mean, I treated them like adults. I, I just let them cut everything themselves. I figure if they cut their fingers or you put a Band-Aid on, I'm not going to worry about that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if I do, I'm, I'm going to have to cut everything for them. And I don't want them to do that. I have to teach them to be careful, the safety rules. You always, you know, want to try to wear something covering your eyes. Gloves, I don't use gloves. Most people don't. But when it comes to grouting, you must use gloves because they damage, it damages your skin and you don't want to breathe that in. So I use a mask if I'm doing it indoors or I go outdoors to mix my grout. And the grout color is very critical to the piece. It's like finding the right frame for a painting. You know, if mm -hmm. it's too dark, like if I do this and I do it in, I would probably use a dark grout, like almost a charcoal because I want it to look like night. If I wanted to look earlier in the day, I would use a darker, uh, a lighter gray color or something. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to use a grout that's going to fade in with your design. So obviously for the, for the really good spoon bill, I want to use uh, something that will contrast so that the pieces will show, but not contrast so much that you see the grout more than you see the glass. Mm -hmm. So grouting is a whole decision. And once you do it, you're kind of stuck, except you can darken, but you can't lighten. You can take Sharpies and darken, ah. or paint and okay. darken the grout, but you can't lighten it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so the information to contact you will be at the end of this video. Right. In terms but, of your but, name, telephone number. Yeah, email, yeah. It'll be in here. And your Etsy my address. My email is just Donna Slosky at arts. Donna Slosky at yahoo.com, and my phone number is nine four one three five seven. 6186, um, hard of hearing, so I do great with texting. Calling is fine, but if we start out our discussion with text, it's usually better for me. So um, let's see, that's it. And thank you so much for your attention. And I hope you got turned on a little bit to mosaics. Thanks. <laughs>